Uh, for, so whenever I come out to the West Coast, people will never seem to have heard of Fifth Third Bank. Uh, that's okay. I won't have you embarrass me by showing hands how many people have heard of it. But Fifth Third Bank is a very large bank. It's in the top 10 in the U.S. We have about 5.5 million customers, 20,000 employees. We're based primarily in the Midwest uh, and in the South. You can't go more than two streets in Ohio without running into not just a Fifth Third Branch uh, sign, but a couple branches and ATMs. So we're all over the place in the Midwest. Uh, we're growing rapidly still, uh, and we do growth primarily uh, through organic growth, meaning move down two blocks, set up another branch, and keep going, uh, and also by acquisition. We're big fans of acquisition. But since we're not in a business meeting, we're in an identity meeting, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our identity program. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about our identity program in general because I want to get to the BDC stuff, the VDS stuff that you guys are here to talk about. Uh, but in general, this is our vision. This is what we started out three years ago when we did our identity management program. This was our guiding vision, our direction for what we wanted to do. As part of the identity management program, we deployed not just virtual directory services, but also a new enterprise directory, uh, as well as updating our provisioning systems. This was one area that's, I think, unique to the banking and a few other industries where we really care about these two things a lot. I mean, scalability and reliability is important for everyone, uh, but we get measured on it every year. I didn't know the Federal Reserve was going to be here today. I probably would have put some more things about how secure we are, uh, but <laughs> you just have to take my word for it. Uh, we're all good. Controls, controls, controls. Uh, <laughs> In terms of integration stats, uh, we've been, the program's been in live for about two and a half years, almost three years. So we've got a large section of applications, application groups integrated already. Uh, Dieter mentioned last year we talked about the BDE app, some of the stuff there. And we'll talk about a couple of those that have been in production for a while tomorrow. Uh, but we do include all middleware services. This is like WebSphere and things like that that run the application groups are also integrated. We cover all the lines of business in production already, except, or at least non-production, uh, based on uh, B2C is still working through some issues. And we, right now we do over a million operations per day in our directory environment. That, that's, it depends on if you have experience or not with directories. It either sounds like a lot or it doesn't. Uh, I don't think it is. It's not a lot for what we built the infrastructure for. Uh, but a million sounds really cool. It sounds like a big number. As this B2C stuff is rolling out, uh, we expect it to go up by an order of magnitude uh, just because of the customer base changing. So this is that technology stack that I mentioned. Uh, I'm not going to go into it too much because all we really care about is this part the VDS stuff, but this is our model. Uh, a lot of architects like to have pictures of what our identity looks like, our systems look like. This is our picture. This picture has been around for years. Uh, you can't go anywhere inside of Fifth Third Bank in any of my presentations without seeing one of these pictures. Uh, it just shows our stack. Applications are sitting up here. They get into the directory environment here, and our provision system comes up and connects, and it's sort of how everything glues together. I also like to talk a little bit about identity silos. Um, we look at silos and identity a little bit different than I guess a lot of people do. Most people talk about it in just this silo, right? You've got your identity silos inside of your organization. You've got your applications. You've got your various directories, and each one has identity information. That's great, except it doesn't really help us talk about how we integrate with them. Uh, so we actually look at the silos a little bit differently. These are important, and they're separate, and something that needs to be combined, but there's also these silos of internal systems versus external systems. If you go next door, you'll hear them talking about federated identity and those sorts of things, right? That's how we get into this silo. And then over here, you've got kind of that middle stuff in between, the applications that use identity. Some of them have identity information in them, but aren't identity systems, right? So uh, those are the silos. BDS has helped us with a lot of these, breaking down the walls, trying to solve business problems. And some of that, I think we get into more tomorrow. What I want to talk about today, though, is our B2C application. So B2C, business to consumer, this is the next frontier for the bank for identity information. Uh, obviously, when you've been in business for 100 plus years, you've got customers that have been getting on with their lives for a while with the current systems. But as technology changes and customer needs change, uh, we need to meet those needs. And we need to have the identity information in the background available to help with that. So B2C and single sign-on is the project that we've been working on. Uh, and it's, it's all centered around portals. So here's pictures, uh, which I think are great because it's a plug in case you are anywhere in the Midwest. This is the lovely portal that you would experience if you're a customer at Fifth Third Bank. It's got nice colors, branding, the whole bit. But the only part I care about on it is right here, right? How do you get in? 
And then once you're in, you know, what does it look like? Now, they, they made it look like it's an integrated system just with current back-end technologies that exist. You've got an IBM WebSphere portal here that's running the portal, and then you've got the servlet application on the back end. Uh, and meanwhile, you know, I have to log in and go in in between the systems. So what we want to do as part of this program is do single sign-on between them. We want to have use our directory, infra in a directory infrastructure to get people from here into here, and at the same time provide personalization services inside of the portal by itself to do cross-selling and other services. So that's what we want to do. Yeah. How many of your five and a half million customers use your site? Internet banking represents about 1.8 million active today, and it's growing about 10% a month, which is a lot. There's more and more people. I think our, our demographic is kind of getting lower inside the bank, so we're seeing more and more people shift to this. People are getting more comfortable with it. So as Dieter mentioned, I was not a fan of EDS. It's not a secret. I, you know, I was, a, I was a directory guy. For 10 years, I did directory services. There's a saying that if, uh, if all you've got is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail, right? So directory services was my hammer. So anytime somebody would come to me at the bank with a problem, I'd want to do a directory solution. I'd want to centralize the identity, create the holy grail, put it all together in one place, and, and solve their problem that way. What I found was that that wasn't possible. While I always had a technology answer for it, I didn't always have one that could be delivered in the time frames that we needed, which is, I guess, why they pay me to, I need to meet business needs. So Dieter helped me understand how virtual directories can help me get that through. The other thing that I didn't like about virtual directory services when we first started with it uh, wasn't just the technology bigot side of me, because uh, I thought the technology was cool, uh, but I didn't know how to sell it inside the bank. Right? I kept getting asked one question over and over and over again, and I, I still don't have a good answer for it. I have one that gets me through. Is, is this a short-term product or a long-term product? Right? Is this a can opener, a Swiss Army knife? Right? Or is this something that you expect to be in the bank and servicing customers you know, forever? You know, we're in a business for 100 years. Already we're going to go another 100, another 100 after that. So the answer that I give them now is that doesn't matter. Right? What I can do is I can meet your business needs with it now, right? And as the technology grows, we'll see if there's a place for it, right? And there's certainly a place for it with this application. So what are we doing with it? This is the challenge that we had to deal with. Uh, this is my tie-in for the need to speed, right, for the Top Gun fans. We do have a need for speed inside the B2C space. Internet banking is the application. 53.com is the portal. We get rated every day on how available our application is and how fast it responds. We get measured by external companies such as Gomez that log in and tell us how, how we're doing. And those reports are public and they matter. The board looks at those. They want to know how available we are and how fast. We have regulatory concerns when you get into the B2C space, which is also true inside of internal applications, right? We do, it does matter how you treat identity information. Uh, we have back-end legacy systems that we had to deal with and we had to make sure we could get this out fast, right? Lots of banks have portals. Lots of banks are doing personalization. We don't want to be the last one there. So this is, this is the challenge, is we need to have single sign-on between application and the portal, and we need to do it quickly and securely. This is the overwhelming picture slide that I think is important in every presentation. Right? This, is, this is for the, the technology people that get the presentation afterwards, and they're going to open it up and see it's a Visio picture, and they want to track every line. This is how single sign-on works. This is not how VDS works. But this is the slide that says that helps frame where we're going with our VDS stuff. Right, so this is how you would log into the application. Clear trust is here. All this is clear trust stuff. Here's the directory, and here's the application. So the only parts we care about today are the top corner and the bottom corner. Right, what's VDS going to do for us and how we're using it today? So from the portal side, right, the portal wants a directory store. Right? right now, our legacy system that stores customer information is not the directory. Right? We deployed the directory two and a half years ago. We've been in business for over 100 years. I, I sometimes think that the mainframe is 100 years old, but it's not. Uh, but that's where the information is now. Customers are on the mainframe. I want to live the open systems lifestyle in a mainframe company. Banks are mainframes. So how do we get to it? The portal needs a poise to it. So people, it's, most of you have used the virtual directory stuff. You know that you can go to outside systems and you can have interception scripts. That's what we're doing here. We have interception scripts inside. Uh, we have a view that's available. Uh, that the portal points to. It looks like a directory. And then in real time, we access that 
system on the back end. How are we accessing that system on the back end? They're, they're writing web services, right? So in web, web services, custom code that's doing the authentication that uh, that's happening today, right? So the, the same things that the applications are hard-coded to do, we can adjust and, and put inside of web services. Those web services can get called by the Java and the interception scripts inside of here, and that's what we're doing. Now, we wondered for a while if there's a place for the unified identity here. I keep looking for a reason to spend the time to unify our identity, to do that next step that David Kearns was talking about, you know, getting away from isolated systems and moving towards unified identity. But this wasn't, this, it didn't work out that it was worth it. So I guess we're still in the low, prof, low performance, you know, easy integration side, which I'm fine with. It's expensive to do the unified identity, right? We have to, there, there's, there's a lot of components to it that you have to deal with. You have to deal with keeping it in sync. You have to deal with the identifiers. Every time you add another identity system, right, you have to go through that exercise again. And it didn't seem like it was buying us anything for this application. So I'm still waiting for that reason to do a unified identity store. But right now, the B2C stuff is all in one place. It's just not a directory. So we're making it a directory with that. that so that's great. So that's one component of it. This is the portal. The problem is the portal... Uh, isn't the application. The portal just gets us halfway there. So there's still the application side of things that we had to deal with. And one of the challenges that we had with this application side is we need to be able to secure it. Who's the Fed? We had to secure the console to it in addition to allowing customers to get in. So the, there's clear trust components here that we can talk about. But two of the things that VDS gets us, right, is the directory side of things, so we can make the legacy repository look like a directory, but also a way to tie in one of the internal identity systems that we had. I don't know how many people use WebSphere or Lockdown WebSphere consoles, uh, but you need to be able to define inside of WebSphere uh, who's allowed to log on to the application console and deploy the application. If you have access to the WebSphere console, you can do all kinds of cool things like turn it off, turn it on, change the code, Right? Say you don't need to log on to the application anymore. Right? So that's important to us that not just anyone can do that. That BDE repository exists inside of our LDAP repository, the Sun directory. All of our WebSphere stuff's logged into that and authenticated against that. So we use VDS to help us with that. We had an interception script that says, you know, if somebody is logging on to the WebSphere application, uh, to look in the directory first to see if they're a directory user in the BDE side, a valid WebSphere user. And if they are, log them onto the console. And if they're not, then don't, right? So you can do that inside the interception script. And that's what we did. It's only about four lines of code, which was pretty cool. Now, the other part of that is inside that same, and this is a WebSphere limitation, inside of that same application server, you have to define how the customers log on, right? How you secure the J2EE app. So we define a TAI for that. We use ClearTrust. I'm sure there's people from RSA here that would love to talk to you about how ClearTrust works and how TAIs work and how it lets you do external authentication for J2E container. Um, but not to steal their thunder, right? But that TAI is going to do a lookup too, right? So inside of WebSphere, before WebSphere will pass their credentials to the TAI to log somebody into the application, it actually does a lookup too based on the directory external repository that's defined in it. So our VDS script had to take into account that customers IDs may go through that same lookup first before going up there. So it's just something that we had to deal with. So what we did is we defined, an, uh, it's just that same interception script. We have, we have a view for, for here for the portal, and we have a view for this, uh, and then it does the lookup, and we call the web service. So how did VDS help us with the development? I mentioned that there was that web service that had to be written. It turns out that takes some time. I used to be an application coder. I didn't do it very much because it got boring, a lot of cut and paste. Uh, but it turns out it takes a while to do that. So one of the things VDS helped us do with this deployment specifically is get around and separate those deployment timelines. Right? So this is something we're able to offer the application team that while you're writing your web service, right, we can have the view already set up so that those teams that you know is a different group and a different line of business that's doing the work can go ahead and do. We just hard-coded successful authentications until the web service was able to do its work. So this is a part of the interception script inside the authenticate method that we used. And you know we just hard-coded credentials uh, uh, that would succeed, 
Now I change these so that if anyone does have back-end access to our systems and wanted to look at one of our development systems, these aren't real passwords, but that's where they would go, right? Did you hear that, Fed? More secure systems. So uh, this was something that was useful because uh, there, w there isn't a lot of understanding of development timelines inside, at least inside the bank, about how long it takes for different people to do things. So the application team assumed that this was going to take us a long time to set up this view to, to build that infrastructure. It really didn't. It wasn't that much code for us. Uh, and we had Radiant write most of it anyway because we're lazy. I think we tricked Lisa into doing it in the support side. We said it was a problem, and here's our code, and then she wrote back with, here's how it really should be. So it's a neat trick. <laughs> you should try that one. Uh, so we separated development line lines. That's good. That's important. It's nice to be able to do that. It's nice to offer that service. It doesn't cost us anything. The other thing that, was, that VDS helped us with is measuring success and also buying converts, right? The application teams are in a mainframe company are very suspicious of open systems. And even inside the open systems world, they're suspicious of directory systems and virtual te directory technology. So VDS helped us measure our success very concretely by adding just some more lines to our interception script. So we were able to show the application team that VDS would not slow them down. Right, because we had to explain to them in all the meetings, yeah, we're gonna, it's okay, you don't have to move your data, you don't have to worry about that, we're just going to go ahead and keep it there, and they assume that's going to take a long time. So we inserted some, some, law, some work into the, uh, the different methods inside the authentication and select script just to measure it. Right? And then we just put that, throw that out in the RLI log so we can tell them specifically how long their web service is taking to return to us and how long our code is taking to execute. This was great because the web services team apparently wasn't as good at this as they said they were. At least initially, they're great people, don't get me wrong, but they insisted that there's no way their web service could take you know, 322 milliseconds to return a search query. It has to be my system, so we measured it. Threw that in there, we showed that we were calling it at the millisecond, and it's returning. That time in between is all them, right, and network communication, which is, in my world is not me, so it's them, right? Uh, <laughs> and, and we showed that. So, you know, rating doesn't talk about this very much. They don't talk about, they talk, they want to talk about how, you know, they can solve your business problems. This was a business problem for me that will never make an RFI, that will never make an RFP, and it won't make anything except this presentation is, this solved a problem for me, saved me tons of emails, tons of presentations saying this isn't our problem. It also sped up the deployment, right? Because we weren't talking about where the problem was, we were able to show it. That was a big help. The other thing, too, is that we were able to say that we can take certain amounts of time off of our logins, so we could sell the product to that way. I mentioned Gomez measures our time for success, right, a login time. They measure that. It's the average, I think, the last two weeks for the major banks that got measured by Gomez was like 6.3 seconds for a login, meaning from the time you put in credentials to when a transaction completes. Right, so they gave us a, you know, you have this much time to finish your transaction, Jeff. You have 1.2 seconds. They gave us in milliseconds because they wanted to get down to single point accuracy. Right, it sounds tougher that way. Right? You have that much time to do it. So this way I knew I could deliver too. Right? I mean, I may be a believer now after you know, three years of using the product, uh, but I sure felt better once I saw the number come up for my bind time being 432 milliseconds instead of 4,000. So uh, a few things of note, and, and then I'll cut it over to the next person. Um, these are the things that We'll talk about this, I will talk about this more tomorrow, how virtualization has helped us solve some regulatory problems and concerns project teams have with deployments, especially in an open systems world. So we'll talk about regulatory stuff tomorrow, but just understand that virtualization of that identity does buy you more than just the technology problem. It, it can help with the business side of things, regulatory sides of things. Uh, that's important because the data stays in that system of record. All those controls that have been proven successful remain there. Uh, we did learn that any data store can be used for SSO. We had a good idea that this would work for B2C because we did it with B2B already, and B2B identities also existed uh, in, on the mainframe, although in a different system, uh, and there were some other challenges there uh, where there was some overlap of identities. Uh, but we, do, we did confirm that we can do this uh, on DB2 backends, like what's storing the information now. Uh, Real-time merges with additions can be expensive. Right, this is what I was, when I was talking a little bit about the uh, unified identity, right, this is, this is where this comes from. Uh, when we were looking at unifying identity, we, had, we were looking at doing some merges, real-time merges, and anyone that tried that, I mean, you see your performance take a big hit. We saw that anyway. Uh, we, did, we do confirm, again, that real-time access can be used with minimum overhead. 
Uh, I take some exception to what David Kern said that, you know, it's more simplistic and lower performance because you do it real time like that. We haven't seen that at all. We haven't seen that at all. Uh, we think there's a lot of benefits to it. I don't know that if we cache the data uh, that we would get any better performance. So it just depends on what that back, back end system is. So that's my story. I'm really hungry, so I talk fast so I can get to my food. So when you hear clanking in a few minutes, that'll be me eating. Uh, but if there's any questions about the B2C stuff that, that we've been doing, I'd be happy to take those. So we, we use uh, RSA Clear Trust, not SiteMinder, but it's the same thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> RSA is not here, right? Okay, it's the same thing. <laughs> They're looking for me, actually. So if anyone sees the guys from RSA, I'm not here. They want to talk to me. I don't know why. Um, we had Clear Trust in place prior to. It was the one identity component that existed prior to the IDM program. Uh, so all of the systems that came in had to integrate with it. Yeah, we didn't see. So we do have requirements to have the channel encrypted any times that we leave, even inside our internal network, um, that that transport is encrypted. Uh, we use SSL for that. <clears throat> um, but we, we saw overhead for the SSL handshake, but not from BDS's implementation of it. I mean, it seems like they're using just the normal APIs for that. So we have we just define the ports, set the certificates up, and then encrypt that channel. We did talk at one point, because we were concerned about that, even before we started using it, about using accelerator devices at the hardware layer, uh, but we didn't have a need to do that. Yeah, I'm, there's lots of ways to solve problems. I, I've never been one to, I've never been a big fan of meta directories um, in, in the traditional sense. I think what I, what I was expecting uh, to talk about earlier what Dave was talking about was kind of that transition from meta directories to virtualization to, you know, now this real virtualization. Uh, I, I don't know. I, it's just not something that I probably have too much prejudice over where meta directories used to be as opposed to where they are now. I don't like to keep the data where it is uh, because of what it buys me in other ways. Uh, and I usually, we, we tend to lean towards point solutions because we can do that more quickly and still meet business needs. So I don't know if that really answers your question. It kind of skirts around it. But... Yeah, it depends. I guess it, in reality, it depends on what you mean by meta directory. So we have our, our data centers are we have three tier one data centers, um, and they're they're regional. Uh, I've worked in companies before where they were global, um, but this this data that I'm that we've measured is all. I think the furthest distance is it's like three states away, the long way. It's like Cincinnati to Michigan, at the you know towards the top of the fist. So. One of the nice things about working for a bank is you can throw money at problems, right? Because if you need more, you just go downstairs. Uh, ban bandwidth, bandwidth is a, a problem when you go across the WAN, right? Because there's latency that's implied by physics more than the technology implemented, right? Light only travels so fast. Um, we, keep the, we keep proximity physically for our systems as much as possible. So we didn't talk about uh, what our identity systems look like. But that's what this sort of gets into. Uh, I, I, do, I am planning to talk about this a little bit more, including the physical side of things and where our systems are set up and what they are tomorrow. But our systems are co-located for identity. So the VDS system sits on, top, on the same server as the directory system. And those systems <laughs> exist in the same data centers as the mainframes. So there's, there are things that we do with the network side with like 3DNS and some network routing tricks that we do to keep all the traffic local. So anytime an app, like a customer comes in, that data, all that communication on the back-end VDS to the application server to the mainframe, all that stays in the same data center unless there's a fault. Right? If there were a fault of some sort, one of the systems are down, then you transverse the network a little bit. 